hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel this is Sess fashion so today i'm going to be showing you guys how to cut and sew a 360 degree flare i'll be showing you how to achieve this layered circular hem and also how to sew a crinoline on a flare this is a continuation of the previous tutorial we did on how to cut and sew a princess dart with layered circular hem i'll leave that down in the description box so you can watch it and these are the materials I'll be making use of and here I have my main fabric I also have a lining which I'll be turning it with I'm making use of a crinoline as well this will make it to stand better and also the gun stay now let's proceed to the calculations these are the measurements that are required first of all we need the round knee circumference and to get that I'm going to measure all around what I have on the hem of my dress. The second measurement we need is the length of the flare. I'm making use of 6 inches for the first tier, 9 inches for the second tier, and in total, we're making use of 12 inches for the third tier. So this is the dress which we'll be attaching the layered peplum to, and I'll first of all measure what I have. This is the hem of the dress. I'll be measuring it around from one point to the other. And here I have 32 inches. After getting that, I'll go ahead and calculate the radius. And since we're making use of a 360 degree flare, I'll be dividing that 32 inches by 6.28. This is constant for finding a radius of a circle. So 32 divided by 6.28 would be 5.1, approximately 5 inches. That means 5 inches is going to be the radius we'll be working with. Now to know how long you'll be folding your fabric, to cut the length of the first second and third tier we'll have to add both the radius and the length in which we want each tier to be so for the first tier which is six inches i'll go ahead to add the five inch radius making it 11 inches for the second tier nine plus five would be 14 inches and for the third tier it will be 12 plus five making it 17 inches so now that we have all our measurements sorted out we can start cutting to fold the fabric, I first of all went ahead to fold it into two, like this. Making sure that what I have here is up to the lengths we need. So this is the first tier I'm folding. And the length we need for the first tier is 11 inches. So right here I have about 13 inches. So this is fine because we're going to be adding allowance to this while cutting. So after folding into two like this, I'm going ahead to fold again like this into four so now we have four folds in total so i'm just going to place it like this and you see this point here where there's no opening anywhere from that point i'll be marking down the radius which is five inches after marking this here I'll then from this radius point, I'll be marking the length. And for the first tier, it's a six inches. After doing that, I'm going to be cutting out. But I'm not going to be cutting exactly on this line. I'm going to be cutting with half inch allowance because I'm going to be joining this upper part to the dress and this down part we're going to be sewing with the lining. So I'm going to be adding half inch all the way around the up and the down. So you might think that after cutting this way we must have lost out on the measurement. That's not a problem. By the time we attach this to the dress it will end up being on this line. So after adding half inch here on the hem, I'll also add half inch. And this is what the first tier looks like. I'll go ahead to do the same thing for the second tier. And I went ahead to fold into two first like this. Making sure that what I have here will be able to accommodate the length. And after folding into two, I went again to fold into four like this and on this point where there's no opening anywhere i'm going to be marking the radius which is five inches
and from this radius line here i'll be marking down the length for the second tier and that is nine inches And then we'll be cutting this out, leaving half inch allowance up and at the hem. For the third tier, I also folded into two and then into four, like this. And at this point where there's no opening anywhere, I'm going to be marking down the radius, which is five inches. And then from this line here, I'll mark the length, which is 12 inches. So after cutting, I'm bringing back all my pieces and placing them on top of each other like this. So this is what all our three tiers look like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be transferring what I just did to the lining. And to do that, I'll just place this on top of the lining and cut exactly the same. So I'm doing this for all the three tiers. So after cutting out, the next thing, I'm going to open these pieces up, both the lining and the fabric. And on this wrong side, I'll be drawing this line to note that that's the wrong side. I'm going to be ironing the gum stay. So I'm going to press all my pieces with this gum stay before going ahead to sew down with quino line. I went ahead to iron my gum stay on my main fabric and on the lining I left it as it is. So what I did here is totally optional. If you don't want to add a gum stay to this, that is totally fine. So to join these pieces together, I'll be using one of it to demonstrate what I'm going to do for all the pieces. So um, I'll first of all open my main fabric like this. And then I'm going to be placing my lining on top of it, right sides facing each other. So if you notice there's no opening on my flare, that's because I'm just going to be joining to the hem of the dress. I'm not going to be joining any other piece. So I'll place this part here, right sides facing each other like this. And after doing that, I'll be placing the crino line on top of the lining like this. All round this flare. So um I find that whenever I sew, this is a hemming gum. I find that whenever I sew my crino line alongside with the hemming gum and you iron it down nicely, it sits really nice. So um, what I'm going to do is this. After placing the main fabric and then the lining, I'll then place the crino line on top of the lining and I'll be putting the hemming gum on top of the crino line. And I'm going to take this over to my machine and I'm going to sew all around. And I'm going to sew all around with half an inch at this edge here. So um, I'll demonstrate how I'm going to be sewing it here so you can understand what I'm doing. While sewing the crino line, 
i'll make sure that i am not pulling it because by the time you pull it and you are done so your flare is going to end up looking weird so just place it just be calm with it be careful don't stretch just sew alongside so i'll take this over to my machine and i'm going to sew with half inch seam allowance all around and i'll do the same thing for all the pieces so i've gone ahead and i've sewn it down you can see so what i'm going to do next is this i'm going to turn it to the right side i'm not turning it over yet and then i'm going to be pushing this seam allowance towards the lining like this and on the right side i'm going to be top stitching with very just very little as little as less than half an inch i'm going to be top stitching all round make sure that it is facing the wrong side make sure that it is facing the lining so just push it and then top stitch on the lining all the way around and then i'll show you what it looks like after doing that i went ahead to turn it to the right side you can see how neatly finished this looks already this is what i meant by you should top stitch by less than half an inch i did that all around and now my pieces are laid down nicely so i'll take this over and give it a nice press so that it lays down better i've gone ahead and i've given it a nice press you can see how nice this looks already you can see the cascading effect this gives so after sewing you will notice that you have some excess in this up part here that's normal all you have to do is just to cut it out it's not a problem at all and it's not going to affect anything after cutting So after I'm done doing that, I'm going to bring back my remaining pieces and I'll first of all place my third tier, which is the longer one. I'll be placing it up like this and on top of it, I'll be placing my second tier like this, aligning it in this middle point, aligning it around the radius. And then for the first tier, I'll just put it on top of everything like this. I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to sew all around to hold it in place. I've gone ahead and I've joined them together and you can see how beautiful it looks already. You can see the cascading effect it's giving. When I open it up, this is what it looks like. And on the inside, this is what it looks like. So what I'm going to do next, I'll bring over my dress the upper part of my dress and then i'm going to be attaching this radius opening with the hem of the dress so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to turn them right sides facing each other and i'm going to be sewing all around with about half an inch to three quarter of an inch depending on the allowance you have left so I say if I have any excess on the peplum, I'm just going to pleat it on the dress and then I'm going to sew all around and show you what it looks like. So guys, this is what the final outcome of my hem looks like. You can see how beautiful this is on the inside. I went ahead to join it with half inch. So right now I'm done. I'll go ahead and weave this all around and the dress is ready to be rocked. For the sleeves, I went ahead to cut out a basic sleeve, two for both hands, and I also cut lining pieces to turn it neatly. The length of the sleeve I'm using is 8 inches plus joining allowance making it 9 inches. I cut out long strips of two with a length of 6 inches longer than my actual sleeve. That is because the top of the sleeve, that's the part where it is attached to the armhole, I'll be using 1 inch to make gathers there. And also at the hem of a sleeve i'll be using five inches to create the puff you can see right here so since my basic sleeve is nine inches long that is including allowance the length of my tool would be nine plus six making it 15 inches and that is what i have here the wideness of the tool is simply the round arm measurement multiplied by three 
my round arm is 12 multiplied by 3 gives 36. That means I have a tool of 15 inch length and 36 inch width cut out here. I also cut two pieces for both sleeves. On one side of my tool, I'll be making little pleats so it could fit all around the hem of my sleeve. After doing that, this is what it looks like. I'll then bring it together like this and I'll be joining the sides. This is what it looks like after joining. The next thing, I'll bring over my sleeve and my lining piece. I'll turn them to the wrong side and I'll be sewing the sides together from one end to the other. I'll also do the same thing for the lining. I'll stitch the sides from one end to the other. After I'm done stitching, I'll bring over the sleeves, the lining and also the tool. So what I'm doing is this. I'm basically trying to arrange my pieces together in such a way that after sewing, the tool should be the outer piece while the main fabric becomes the second piece and the lining stays underneath the main fabric. So basically, it should look like this after I'm done sewing. So this is how to arrange this to sew. I'll be placing right sides of my fabric piece to the right sides of my lining. And then after that, the tool will be placed in between the two of them. So in order to have the tool face right after stitching, while putting in between these pieces, I'll make sure that I'm placing it the wrong side of the tool facing the right side of the main fabric. So here I have my three pieces placed accordingly, right sides of my main sleeve and lining facing each other and then the two in between the two of them with the wrong side of my tool facing the right side of my main fabric. And then I'll pin this down and stitch together all round. After stitching, this is what I have, as you can see. What I'm going to do next is, I'm going to open this up and then I'll push the lining inwards. And I'll use this tool to cover up the main fabric like this. Now I have the lining inwards, the main fabric, and then the tool on the outside. Already, you can see the pop coming out so nicely. So the next thing, I'm going to be securing just the main fabric and the lining piece. And then after that, I'm going to be joining to the arm of our dress. I'll place right sides together and I'll stitch all around the armhole. After stitching down, this is what it looks like. You can see that the tool is on its own, not attached at the top yet. So watch carefully how I'll do this. I'll take this tool and cover it over my attached sleeve leaving about one inch over the seam line and I'll pleat the two all around the already sewn sleeve making sure that I am sewing on the seam line. After sewing that, this is what I have. You can see how beautiful this looks already. So guys, we've come to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and share. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.